I really care about uh, stuff, tangible. So this is one of the most beautiful devices. How many people can compute using Abacus? <laughs> this is an ancient computing machine, but uh, making uh, all the digits tangible. So you can directly touch and feel. That's something I really excited because it's affordance. If you have this instrument, become a musical instrument, imaginary toy train, also you can scratch the back. <laughs> without reading any document, manual, written by Google, or Apple, or Microsoft. That's one of the beauty of this uh, uh, tangible interface. I'm from uh, MIT Media Lab, and I've been running a group called Tangible Media for 22 years. The focus is how to make intangible, abstract information tangible. You can touch and feel the existence, because we have hands. I want to grasp it. One of my most favorite uh, uh, artifacts is Orari. How many people actually saw the Orari, the models of the uh, solar system? Uh, beauty is this machine has uh, handles as the interface to be grabbed by all of us. Then our body becomes part of the system. So once you start rotating, all the movement of the planets is in sync with the body. So no ambiguity about the causality. So this clarity, also this engagement, embodied engagement, is something completely missing current digital interaction. Uh, basically, smartphone, tablet, and a computer. Pixels completely separated from your bodies, stuck inside of a 2D screen. Also, this real 3D, all the students or kids or teachers can come around. It's not a fake 3D from one point of view. So in a meta sense, I really care about the arts and the sciences, how to blur the boundary between arts and science or music and technology. Let me show the first piece Dr. Xiao Xiao uh, created called the Mirror View. So this is a piano in which pianist can live, then play the music with a person in front of the piano. It's a mirror reflection. But the pianist can also not only just play, but to move the key, actually the key. It's a kind of ghostly presence. So music is not just a sound hit your ears. Even before pianist touch first key, all the music started because of breathing, posture, and all the movement. How to convey all this emotional experience is one of the key. Let me show another piece called the eye brush. How many people paint water, oil? How many people are the kids who love painting? I think uh, painting is something so fundamentally important to express our idea, externalizing ideas. And uh, this is a project called Iobrush that uh, Dr. Kimiko Ryokai started. And uh, in the era of the Renaissance, painters were also pigment makers. They made their own ink. If they want to have a purple, they went to the seashore looking for the uh, purple seashells and create their color. In Asia, they may go to the field, find the uh, flowers or trees to make a perfect green. So this is a system to allow people to create their own new color and the texture from a world surrounding them. So this is a special color because all the emotional attachment, you can make exactly the same color technically by color picker, but the totally different because you love your dog or anything you around you. So using this as an ink, we can do something very interesting. So now you can see the finger clicking then you see the teddy bear. So this is a color came from teddy bears. So origin of the color is recorded. Every stroke has a memory. So that has a quite an interesting uh, impact. So I went to the kindergarten, talked to kids. This is an important uh, way to utilize the history. But the beauty is she didn't listen to me. She came up with her own interpretation. Can I get sound high? So that's one of the most important moments for interaction designer, that uh, our users go beyond our imagination, coming up new way of the expressions. So we are very much thinking about creating a new medium for the artistic expression or design or communications. So the title of Kimiko Ryokai's thesis is the world as a palette. Once you interact with eye brush, you can't stop thinking 
what kind of new art piece you can make through these beautiful color leaves in New Hampshire, for example. People see the world differently, always thinking about the possibility of the new expression, like wearing an invisible eyeglass. So that's the purpose of a design. So my group has been very interested about how to really change the way people interact with the information. Today, everything is under the waters, like a pixel behind the 2D screen. But I try to make tangible, physical world, like this abacus. You can directly manipulate and feel it. But also I want to make uh, materials more dynamic, more dancing, because physical material is usually frozen. So this is a tangible bit called sandscape. You can sculpt the sand to make a beautiful landscape. This is landscape design tools. It's a sand. Then computer capture all the geometries. Then paint. This is like a water drainage. How water runs down. All the vectors show the speed of the water going down. So you can infer about erosion, for example. So this is a medium for form giving for beauty, but also population analysis. But unfortunately, this sand has no memory. Once you change the shape, it, it, it can't restore. So that's sad. So we, we came up with a new genre called radical atoms, uh, dynamic computational materials. Let me show the Inforce, So Inform. This is a system called Inform that my colleague, Daniel Leitzinger, and Sean Former and our team created. How many people saw this video? This is a, called Shape Display, 1,000 pins but the capturing the body or anything in the world, then we create the physical image of this uh, person. So this is not a pixel, so that you can also actually actuate, manipulate the remote physical object. It may sound a bit kind of crazy, but that's really crazy. It's very exciting, and it's running in my lab in the MIT Media Lab. So being here and there is our dream, but uh, you can really recreate anything like uh, this tools to grab these materials. So this is an inform to really show how we can go beyond the sandbox, sandscape. So combining the three engines of the inform, we created a new piece called Transform. And we brought it, this into the Milano Design Week. Let me show the uh, short videos which introduce how Transform works. So now you see the red ball, this is all frozen materials, dancing with the new materials, which we call radical atoms. So we try to create the materials which physical, dynamic, and still computation. Pixel is great, but completely intangible, stuck behind 2D screen. And all the physical materials making this building is static and inert and frozen. But the materials we are creating for radical atoms is dynamic, physical, and computational. And of course, it's interactive. One of our dreams is we want to invent new white canvas and a paintbrush. This is like a new canvas, but uh, Missing is a Picasso Goh or, or uh, Matisse. Would you like to be? Is one question. So we try to create a new medium of the artistic expression, but the important key principle is transdisciplinary to enjoy all the collision of the different disciplines, finding opportunity in conflict between the disciplines, and also breaking down old paradigm to create new archetype. That's the important guiding uh, our principles. And also, we really care about art because art helps us to bring our perspective to beyond the horizon. So we really appreciate art, although we, of course, do a lot of uh, science technology. We've done a lot of the artistic exhibition. This is NTT ICC. Also recently, we are showing a lot of the piece in the Ars Electronica. Last year, Ars Electronica in Linz, Austria, took uh, our radical atoms as a general umbrella theme of the entire uh, event, basically try to be alchemist to create new materials for our artistic expressions. So these are examples of the inform over there, also biologic. So you have a chance to go to Linz, Austria. This is my team, which I'm very proud of, and uh, hope you have a chance to uh, drop by. 
So I think that showing those pieces to the public so that all the kids or anybody can interact with this material is something very, very important for us. So I think uh, spiral, this spiral is something very important because art question about our world, science is great to explain the mechanism, principles of the world, but also design, articulate the solutions. Then te technology really enable, make it happen. But we have to go this uh, four dimensions very, very quickly, frequently. So th this is a spiral, uh, Nelly Oxman's uh, Krebs cycle of creativity. This is Anthony Gaudi's uh, Sagrada Familia stairs. I just borrowed as a showing. This is a tower of the bubble. So in some sense, I believe going through this cycle of dimensions, creating tower to the heaven or the axis is something very important. So that uh, when people uh, built the tower of the bubble, there's one uniform language all people spoke. But uh, today, we really appreciate diversity, speaking all the language of arts, science, design, and the technology, then to be very inclusive. And the diversity is something important engine for our creativity. And uh, I think to do the research uh, or design, I think vision is something very, very important, not technology of today, because technology just means, but they become obsolete next year. Also, needs of the user, customers, very important for business, but it keeps changing. But the fundamental vision may last much longer than our lifespan. So three things we need to really envision, what kind of future we want to really create. Also embody, we have to build, otherwise people cannot really experience, build and exhibit or share. But also to inspire is something very important. If not inspiring, nobody remember, it's no impact. So for envisionment, art play a very critical role. Also to inspire people, art teachers about how to present our work. Of course, science, design, technology, all important to embodiment. But this ambition, embody, inspire, is a very important three key principles to the creative work. So thank you very much for your kind attention.